This episode of Stupid Musician Text is brought to you by DistroKit. Hey everybody, so it's time for the long-awaited return of Stupid Musician Text. I got a lot of requests for this one, and if you want to see more, make sure you hit that fucking subscribe button. All right, let's skip the rest of the bullshit and get to the stupid. First up, we've got an absolutely amazing tweet from possibly one of the stupidest musicians on earth. Surprisingly, he's not a bass player, but a one-hit wonder suffering from LSD, lead singer disease. You know him, you hate him! It's that paramount of mediocrity, Chris Taylor Brown from Trapped. We have 2.6 mil Spotify and 2.6 mil Pandora users right at this moment who listen to everything we have ever made because a major label made Headstrong a classic. It's great to be able to do what you love and make a great living at it. Sorry that won't ever happen for a pathetic loser like you. Well, speaking as one of the pathetic losers, Chris, I gotta say, you're absolutely right. Most of us are probably won't ever have a hit record like you did 18 fucking years ago. And most of us won't be able to milk an entire career out of one freaking song! Nobody can take that away from you. That is quite an achievement, so congratulations. But calling Headstrong a classic, oh, come on. Fat Bottom Girls was a classic. Running with the Devil was a classic. Headstrong is just something they play for background music at Home Depot. If you truly love what you do, that's amazing. Good for you. But personally, I'd rather have my hand slammed on a car door every single day for the rest of my life than have to sing that monotonous vanilla every single night for the rest of my life. Okay, so we've got a new feature here on Stupid Musician Text called, What Does This Actually Sound Like? Let's take a look here and see if we can recreate these amazing tones generated by these awesome mic techniques. That AT2020 mic is side address. Shouting in the top of it will not capture the optimum sound of your voice, FYI. I don't know what you're talking about, man. It sure sounds amazing when I do it. Cool guy. And how about this technique? Not to be content with just covering the parts of the mic that make it directional, this goes the extra mile and creates a pocket of shittiness. This sounds like absolute shit, but it sure looks cool. And last but not least, Francis gets in on the action as well. You'd think with the untold trillions his church is sitting on, somebody would buy him a clue and show him out all the fucking microphone correctly. Yo, it's fucking Sunday. You got my money? My guess is, not loose, behemoth, suicidal tendencies. I don't know why you like behemoth. They're creepy and inappropriate. Plus, they talk about demons. Hail Satan, motherfuckers! Okay, man, slow down. Let's, let's spend some time on planet Earth here. Demons aren't real. Neither is Satan, Santa Claus, or even Jesus for that matter. Need proof? Watch what happens with this outbreak over the next few months. People are gonna pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. It will do absolutely nothing, just like it always does. Superstition is not gonna help anybody, so stop worrying about what doesn't exist. Wash your hands and stay the fuck inside. Next up, somebody sent me this one. Yeah, I'd cry too. This next one was shared to me over the SMG Discord, but the origin appears to be Facebook, where somebody dared ask the question I'm sure more than a few of us have had. With all due respect and out of interest, what is it with these rosebush fonts that you can't read? If you can't read them, then I dare say you get off our page because it's the only genre we deal with. But I can't tell who the supporting acts are? How are you supposed to know? It's a genuine question. Oh, come on, man, it's plain as day. You've got awesome badass death metal dude featuring three guys with their hands in their pockets. And the support bands couldn't be any more easy to read. You've got Chicken Scratch, Visions of Dyspepsia, followed up by Brillapad and whatever I pulled out of my hairbrush this morning. Fuck, man, I swear it's like you're not even trying. I don't update this much as our Instagram is our main place of sharing things, etc. That said, Nam still doesn't matter to me. No more people making thinly veiled bullshit TC clones and tube screamers claiming that they aren't. All these AR guys who are no talent hacks can fuck off to. It's the pedal world, not the record industry. You have no place here. Death metal is back in a big way, and I expect to see all these stoner weed fuzz companies try to jump ship to capitalize on it because they are only care about your money, not your bands. You've always cared more about the music than the money. Ask anyone I've worked with about that. Mini pedals are boring, and I'll never offer them. Less trends, more originality. Transparency matters more than social media club. That all said, go start a band. Get the fuck off the internet. I wonder if these death metal pedals are labeled with the same type of logos. Can you imagine having a pedal board full of these things? How the hell could you tell them apart? Kind of like just trying to tell death metal bands apart by listening to them. 
All right, this episode of Stupid Musician Text is brought to you by DistroKid, my favorite service to put music out to online retailers like Apple Music, Amazon, Google Play, and Spotify, plus over 150 smaller online music retailers as well. It costs a whopping 20 bucks a year and you get to keep 100% of your earnings. DistroKid also has lots of cool features, including instant verification on Spotify, change your image on Apple Music and iTunes, and add credits and liner notes to stores and streaming services. And there's a brand new synced lyrics feature so you can have the lyrics play along to your Instagram and Apple Music posts. This is especially great if your singer loves to cup the mic and nobody can understand it. You can also use the Teams function, which allows you to split your earnings automatically among your bandmates so you can stop explaining to the bass player how he'll get paid and you can get back to making music. I use DistroKid to put my music online, including this channel's theme song, The Eagle Has Landed, and we even got a license for DistroKid for that cover of Moon on the Water we did a while back. Go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Spectre today and grab yourself a 7% discount on the first year. Follow the link in the description below. Now back to the show. Sorry I missed your call. On a shoot. How can I help you? Is this the studio? And I'm almost 16. I rap so good. We're moving to California soon this summer to try and see where I can move this forward to. You would be very surprised. I just don't trust everybody. I do audio production for film, TV, and commercials. Music is a bit outside of what I do unless it's an artist I'm really interested in working with. Bad baby? You heard of her? She has nothing on me. Could you help me the best you can? I bill $1,000 a day for up to 10 hours. Is that within your budget? It's a fee to even work with me. You know I'm going to be the next big thing. Well, it's going to be a hard pass if you charge a fee. I make my living recording, and I'm not going to waste time recording for free. If you can afford my rates, I'm happy to work with you. Regardless of being established or not, people need to pay for my services. If you think I'm going to pay someone to record, then you are delusional. I guess so. Have fun. You're going to have a horrible report on your website telling a 15-year-old girl she's delusional. Okay, let's make something crystal clear. Being a teenager and female is no excuse for stupidity. It's not like you don't have access to Google and you can't type in a simple question like, do I have to pay for a recording studio? No, that would be far below this superstar who's gonna be the next big thing. In fact, I even looked into it to see how many next big things had a successful record without paying for studio time. It turns out it never fucking happened. Not even once. Look, I get it. We're all new ones. So since Googling something was out of the question, allow me to enlighten you. Recording studios need money so the staff can buy food and pay their bills. Bills like rent, bills for equipment and insurance. All of those things cost money. No studio in the entire universe is going to pay you to come in and burn up time, even if you are gonna be better than Bad Baby. So if by some miracle you do manage to score a record deal, the record company will give you an advance on your record. This is a sum of money which is used to pay for studio time and production. Now a word of caution on that, don't blow it all at once. The government sees that money as income, so put half of it in the bank so you can pay it in taxes. Music business is fun, isn't it? But in the meantime, grab your cell phone and start making videos. If you're as awesome as you think you are, people will watch. You've got access to the entire world through social media, and all you need to do is to make something interesting. So what are you doing watching this? Get busy! Make America stop coiling cables around your elbow again. I have a warranty for it and get new ones for free. I'm a do because I can, boy. I guess learning the over-under cable wrapping method just takes too much effort. Why bother when you can just order a new one? It's not like the entire nation is on fucking lockdown right now. Or is cable replacement for utter morons considered an essential service? Speaking of morons, check out this next one. Reddit was kind enough to supply this epic. Hey pal, my band are very interested in having you record, mix, and master our upcoming EP. How much do you charge? Hmm? Hmm? Dude, it's almost one o'clock in the morning. Can this please wait until later in the morning, around 7.30 That to is 8? no way to speak to a potential customer for sure. And one o'clock in the morning is not a good time to make a business deal. I'll speak to you later. I can't speak later. I have to work all day today. How much for an EP with eight songs? Need prices quickly. And do you not think I have to work in the morning as well? For a five-track EP, I normally charge about $1,200, but because your band's EP is longer than five songs, I'll probably do it for about $1,400. Can you please make us a deal and do it for $400? We can include you in our EP and can pay you in more sales. 
Promises do not pay for my bills, let alone my time. The price is firm. If you cannot afford it, you might have to look elsewhere. We are not rich. You can't seriously expect us, us to cough up almost 1500 Be lucky that the price isn't going up as it's now almost 2 in the morning and I have to work in five hours. I'll message you later. That is bullshit! You can't charge us more for just messaging you. How do you expect local bands to hand over that much money? That is so not cool, dude. What is not cool is messaging me when I've told you to stop. Last warning. What do you mean, last warning? Huh? The price is now $2,500. You should have left me alone when I told you to. And no, the price is absolutely firm now. What the fuck? I'm calling your studio tomorrow and talking to your boss. Have fun with that. Oh, wait. Guess what? I am the boss. I'll hear from you later then. This is bullshit. We have labels waiting for our EP. All I asked for was the price. If you treat your customers like this, we don't want to work with you. Lol, you have labels waiting, hey? Funny, because I don't think I've ever heard of your band. Why don't you tell me the name of your legendary band? My band is called Complete Fuckheads and we do have labels waiting! But I doubt you would ever have play in front of anyone! Thank you for the name. I'll be sending these text messages to every studio and engineer in the area to warn them to not work with you. I'm blocking your number now. I hope your EP less band goes far, you fucking twat. Okay, word to the wise. Don't text the person you're asking for help at one in the morning. Especially when they tell you to stop texting them! Believe me, it can wait. If you gotta work, text them in the morning before work or on your break. This is not difficult. However, a little perspective can be a big help. Your band will still be completely unknown if you book the studio at one in the morning or noon the next day. Why does the bassist sound like a bullfrog throwing up? His technique is ass. What are we paying you for then? To record the ass and make it sound like a bullfrog throwing up. Ah, somebody finally discovered that rule number two isn't just a clever saying, but a real phenomenon. If you don't want your bass tracks to suck ass, don't bring the useless cunt in your band to the studio, hire a session player. Because if the studio charges by the hour, it'll be cheaper to use the guy who can nail the takes than to waste several days waiting for the zero talent on the four string to finally learn the fucking songs! Or you can just program the bass. Because in this case, artificial talent is preferable to none at all. First half plus of the album done and up. Hell yeah! I know you probably have most of it done, but can we do a session Sunday where we just go through and add cool shit to take it all to another level? That would mean I have to remix and remaster just about everything. What did you have in mind? I want to throw some tambourine in and some phaser stuff. And this, folks, is why we charge by the hour. I call these percussion days, and they're great. As an engineer, you get to sit around and watch the band argue about what percussion is needed where, and then finally record one or two small parts that fit a song. Usually a tambourine or a shaker. This whole process usually takes up an entire day and it is a great moneymaker. If you run a home studio, I highly recommend having a basket full of cheap percussion instruments on display. The temptation will just be too great for bands to ignore. I want a girlfriend to clean my guitar and to tune it. This tune guitars suck. Yeah, I can't see him getting a girlfriend anytime soon. Looking for an experienced percussionist to lay down some drums for me in the studio in about a month's time, possibly, for a track I will be recording. There is no pay, unfortunately. Studio costs are absolutely unreal. However, it's a great chance to get some exposure. If this interests you, please send me a message so we can discuss this further. P.S. The studio I'm interested in booking studio time has a drum set available for use, if need be. Thanks a bunch, Robbie. No pay, but great exposure? Really? What kind of exposure exactly there, Robbie? Tens of thousands of social media followers? Any at all? Even if the musicians you're seeking were willing to be paid in exposure, your lack of detail concerning said exposure is a little concerning, mainly because I'm guessing that the exposure the drummer will get will be to your close friends and their parents. And last but not least, here's some amazing commentary on my bass player's holiday gift guide. Haha, <laughs> this is spot on. This is most certainly not spot on. I've never seen a more ignorant and unfettered opinion piece about the bass. First of all, this guy is an asshole. His opinion is invalidated because he contradicts himself. Bus fare because he doesn't have a car? Or are you just gonna give him truck nuts for his truck? Either he has a car or he doesn't. You can't have it both ways. Second of all, eat a dick. Whining last week about, why can't I find a good bass player that knows how to get a good sound? Wham! Well, maybe because of videos like this. Ha <laughs> ha, holy butthurt, Batman. I guess you don't want this shirt for Christmas then. <sighs> Apparently, I have to spell it out for the guy. Obviously, the bass player in question does not have a car, but he does have a truck. It doesn't run anymore, and it's abandoned in his mom's front yard. But you can still get him truck nuts so he can compensate. 
All right, that's it for this episode. Thanks very much to DistroKid for sponsoring this. And if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button, pound the bell, and slap your nearest bass player. If you've got some awesome, stupid text that you'd like to see on the show, you can submit yours in the link below. Thanks for watching. Share it with your friends. Stay the fuck inside and wash your fucking hands!